the South African East Coast is renowned for its dangerous east winds. So many ships were lost in Algoa Bay that the bay came to be dreaded as a destination for sailing vessels. Lives, ships and fortunes were regularly lost. Modern ships are not as beautiful or romantic as sailing vessels, but with their huge engines they are able to escape these dreaded storms. Sometimes, however, when the anchors get snagged on the seafloor, they have to leave them behind. Today's mission is to salvage a ship's ground tackle. For this we would need to use the 250 ton tug Ibai. For the scape of the guys would need their wool paint. The estimated weight of what we were planning to lift is in the region of 25 tons. However, because no one is certain as to the exact length of chain, this can easily be twice that weight. Right down and back. This kind of weight is short work for a salvage tug, but Ibai is a mooring tug and has winching gear that was not designed for this kind of work in mind. To lift the anchor and chain we would need to use lift bags. Because of the depth we will work at, we will not have time to rig each bag in turn, so we decided to have them connected in groups of five bags to be filled via a shared manifold. This will effectively inflate the bags like a bunch of grapes and provide lifting capacity of 10 tons per group of bags. Eventually we get going. The journey to the dive site will take around two hours and the duck, Jenna, will serve as our dive support vessel or DSV. The Tuggy Bai was built in the early 1980s in Japan. After 30 years of hard service she was sold and spent several years not being taken care of. She was then bought and lovingly restored by a group of former crew and tug enthusiasts and brought back into service. Many of her crew had spent decades working on her and after she returned to sea, they followed suit. This is to be her first project after a new reincarnation. Mark will be the first diver down. The plan is for the DSV to reach the dive site first and pass a mooring rope attached to the chain to be raised onto the tug. This had been attached at an earlier dive. The idea was that the tug would winch this line up until the chain reached the surface. But from the get-go plans changed when we realized the winch isn't able to lift this enormously heavy chain. We had planned to start with this configuration, but instead now we end up with most of the chain still on the bottom. Compounding this issue is the 36 meter water depth. We will send Diver Down 1 to attach the first grouping of lift bags, but because of the water depth, he only has 15 minutes of bottom time. We do not want the divers entering deco time because of the amount of physical work ahead of us and the subsequent danger of the bends. So while I get comfortable, a standby diver, ready to jump into the water at a moment's notice, Mark gets kitted as Diver 1. Mark has to collect the lift bag bundle at the bow and get all the air out of them before allowing them to sink to the bottom 36 meters down. And he has to get air out of all five bags to stop the lift bags from holding it back. A 
Along the way, he encounters this tangle of rope and has to cut free the strop to allow the bundle to continue its descent. Somehow he manages to get the lift bag to pass and promptly runs into a bigger snarl. Remember, he only has 15 minutes to get these bags to the bottom and in such a way that the next diver will be able to complete his tasks in turn. It is absolutely amazing how a rope can be tangled up if left unattended for a few days in the swell. Diving weather in Port Elizabeth only occurs between an endless train of frontal weather systems. Today is no exception and Mark soon finds himself pummeled by currents and surge caused by another one of these weather systems that is expected to hit tomorrow. The chain is being repeatedly pulled up and down in the mud causing visibility to disappear and he has to be very careful not to get this heavy chain on top of himself. If possible, he has to connect the lifting strop to the chain. No easy task with the chain hopping about. He is now in almost total darkness. In addition to the chain and strop, he has five lift bags falling around him. He also has a manifold, filling hoses, filling pipe and his own ability to worry about. Should he get himself entangled, he might not be able to surface and he only has 15 minutes. Eventually it is time to head back to the surface, slowly moving up hand over hand, breathing steadily to outgas and keeping an ever sharp eye out so as not to get entangled. Now that we have the first bunch of lift bags on the bottom, the next lucky diver has to connect the strop to the chain, the inflation hose to the manifold and start inflating the bag so as to lift the loop of chain. <laughs> that lucky diver is me. So into the water and down I go. Pass the same snare up spark to pass. By the time I reach the bottom and the chain, the visibility is completely gone. I had to do everything in near total darkness and had the same surge and current to fight this market. My 15 minutes pass in struggle and many words are said that are unsuitable for YouTube.
Once back on board and safely out of the way, we decide to blow the bags and lift the first loop of the chain. But there is a problem. Yupi has a look. The bags aren't inflating properly. Instead of all five bags inflating, only three <laughs> seem to stay that way. <laughs> Close your eyes and think of England. <laughs> we need to lift from all five to work in concert and provide maximum lift. Back to the drawing board we go. Instead of all the bags working together for maximum lift, some of the bags did not fill properly. I hope so. I hope so. And then the shackle around here. Okay, now we have to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The plan now is for Wesley to go down and reattach the lift bags to the chain lying on the seabed. However, on arrival, Wesley finds a whole new can of worms. In addition to some of the bags not inflating, he finds that the tug and swell are making the chain hop up and down to such an extent that he can hardly touch it. Not only is there the real risk of losing a finger or even an arm, the real danger is of an air embolism or burst lung. The biggest change in pressure occurs at the surface, and because the diver is so close to the surface, there is a risk of this hopping up and down and sudden repeated change in pressure could lead to serious lung injury. He also finds the lifting strop that I had attached is hopelessly pinched between the enormous links of this chain. After dismantling the deflated bags, Wesley's dive is aborted and he gets pulled back to pork. bags get recovered and Yupi, a fresh diver, gets sent down to attach a new bunch of lift bags to where the chain sits on the bottom. This he accomplishes in the dark in short order. Jonathan follows this up by taking a line to the same attachment point. The idea is now to use these ropes and pull the chain and anchor up so as to get this whole bundle to move the shallower water. In addition to the main winch we had brought along several chain blocks and come alongs. If we could move into shallower water we would have more dive time to get to better grips with the task at hand.
despite many tons of pulling power, we soon realized that all we are doing is to pull the dynamic stretch out of the lifting ropes. We are not actually lifting the chain we are hoping to recover. An anchor weighing at least 10 tons hasn't even been brought into action yet. It was time to go home. Empty handed after a very long day and rethink what we were trying to do. Coming up in the next episode Man overboard and hectic boat maneuvers.